Hello guys, it's Gameplays. I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a new video and once again outside because the weather is great. Finally a sunny day after all this rain, this rain so great. So today's video is about this little boy that just arrived. Ryzen 5 5600X. So, I mean just arrived but it actually arrived yesterday. Uh, and I yesterday just recorded the the unboxing and today I recorded other things like for example some results for you to see. So in this video we'll have the unboxing and comparing the box of the 2nd gen, 3rd gen and 5th gen, which is this one. Um, and I will show you some Cinebench results and some Ada64 results just for now and compare... Damn, G Jesus, I hate this cock, the, the animal of course. And basically my opinion comparing the 3600 XT and the 3600 versus the 5600 X in terms of temperatures, power draw, voltage uh, and gaming performance overall. Don't forget that I bought this processor with my own money and for that the sponsor of today's video helps a lot. Sponsoring today's video we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17 and if you use my SKAG code you get 20% off lowering the price to $13. After the payment you'll receive the key in no time and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So let's go! So guys, I'm recording the, um, the audio with my smartphone, so the sound may not be that good. By the way, I know that the unboxing is not uh, really that pleasant, but at least it is nice to see, I think. So this is the box of the Ryzen 5000 series. So it is a little grayer than the previous ones, but I'll, I'll show you the previous one. So, okay. Um, this is the one from the second generation. Okay, and this is one from the third generation. So, as you can see, let's put things properly. So, second, third, and fifth. Yes, we have the fourth generation, but it is all, it is only APUs uh, in between these two. That's why they passed to the fifth generation to the so that the fifth generation can be CPU only and not APU, okay? So the second generation you have here, Ryzen 5, the cooling here, so we have, we actually had the Wraith Spire instead of, this, instead of the Stealth one, which is quite better, it is bigger at least. So yeah, the box includes AMD Ryzen processor uh, and thermal solution, okay, the, the newest ones say a little different, so the normal here and Ryzen 5 2600X, okay? This is the second one. Now, the third generation, Ryzen 5 3600, as you can see, okay, you can, you can see properly, okay? Here, third gen, PCI Express 4, the cooling is already different, as you can see, so it's the Wraith, uh, but not the Spire, it's the Stealth, which is considerably worse. Uh, and the box overall is quite different, slimmer also. And now we have the 5th generation, with here the 5600X. And the Air Ryzen, also the Wraith Spire, no, the Wraith Stealth, sorry. Um, and the instructions in the box, also here. 5000 series and of course it is PCI Express 4. So let's open it now. Okay, so... Here we have... Important, please read, the AMD Ryzen 5000 series desktop processor contained in this package is compatible with the AMD socket AM4 motherboards when a compatible BIOS update has been installed. Okay. Now it is the manual, I think. So AMD processor, certificate of authenticity, authenticity 
whatever, is it better? Here we have the CPU, Ryzen 5 5600X, and the usual, here, focus, and the usual sticker, AMD Ryzen 5 sticker. As for in the box, the rest of the box is the actual cooling solution, which like I said before is the Wraith Stealth, not the Wraith Spire, so it is quite smaller than the Spire, so the thermal solution is, all, is also way worse. So, as you see, the cooling solution is not that great, yeah, not that great, so as you can see the heatsink is pretty damn small, which is not a good thing for me. But yeah, let's see a bit of how it performs, the Ryzen 5 5600X. So basically, the Ryzen 5 3600 is now ready for finally taking off uh, and go to another motherboard. My cooling system is also ready for the new Ryzen 5 5600X, so I mean, let's go! Here it is! The Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Let's put it in the box and save it. Applying now some Thermal Grizzly Chironaut, one of the best thermal pastes you can actually buy. And let's see how it performs. So guys, let's see some of the results. So for example, here, let's open Cinebench R15 and as you can see, for example, let's do a small test, but before that we have here um, the Ryzen 5 5600X doing 2012 points, 2012 points on the Cinebench R15 multi-threading, which is a lot, seriously. It is a lot. So basically the results I shown you before, so this one with actual, let me see, the 5600X. So I had a 5600X with lower, with lower results like uh, 19 something and that was due to the recording, using relief recording. So basically using and doing the test without relief, we actually have over 2000, so 2030 points on Cinebench R15 multi-threading. As for the single core, we have here 20, uh, 250, so 250 Cinebench points, but that applies to the same uh, as before, so it is recording. The results without recording are 256, so 6 more points in Cinebench R15 single core. Pretty damn great. So basically, um, as you've seen, um, the Cinebench results are pretty damn great. So now let's see, for example, A the 64, how it actually performs. I already have the test here, uh, as you can see. So we have around 5600, 
56,000, sorry, uh, on memory read. The write is normal to be almost half of it because of the CLDO, because it only has uh, a CLDO where the cores are in. Uh, only the Ryzen 9, if I remember correctly, has the full value here since it has two CLDOs. The copy value is also nice and the latency is quite decreased. So, for example, in terms of the, my Ryzen 5 3600, with the same exact memory timings and so on, I had around, um, let me just remember, I had around 60, 65 nanoseconds here so with the same timings they reduced from 65 to 57 nanoseconds which is pretty damn nice as for the other values l1 and l2 cache they are pretty normal the l3 cache is quite off because the values should be a bit higher but well what matters is the overall performance i don't know if it is actually related to to the 64 needing an update or not i don't really know as for the temperatures, we see that we have 35 degrees temperatures uh, at idle, which is completely normal, of course, taking in consideration even more my, my Fryzen cooler, so which is a pretty massive cooler for a normal CPU, let's say. As for the voltages, it is running, as you can see here, 1.24, 8, 1.25, so it is around 1.24 and 1.25, even at load. Uh, the power draw is 41 watts at idle, around 40 watts. You can make it lower, way lower, actually, if you, if you, um, if you just use the, um, the power states. I do not use the power states because I don't want to simply that. But you can use the power states and you can get almost the same performance or virtually the same performance uh, while also getting way lower power consumption at idle. And as for the clocks, you can see here... 4.7 stuck now one thing that really changed and really made me actually want to keep this Ryzen 5 5600X in my main build is the temperatures so Ryzen 5 everyone that has a Ryzen 5 3600 or a Ryzen 5 3600 XT which is actually better in terms of temperatures due to lower voltage all of the people know that the Ryzen 5 3600 has quite some odd spikes, let's say some, the temperatures are actually pretty odd. So let's move the camera a bit. Um, yes, the temperatures are actually pretty strange um, and they have spikes, they have a lo lots of spikes, they have lots of spikes um, and that doesn't happen with Ryzen 5 5600X. So the temperatures are way better, way, way better. I don't know how they did that properly. Uh, maybe with, with erasing the CCX, maybe the boost algorithm is also better and so on. But uh, the temperatures are way, way better. My fan doesn't make near, uh, near as much as... It isn't near as loud as it was, of course. So less noise, way less temperatures, no temperature spikes. Thank you. And it is way faster. So... But can, what can we actually ask more? So it's the best of both worlds. So it's faster, it, it is colder, uh, it is less noisy. What can we ask more? And even the power draw. Let's just pass to the power draw. Okay, mate. Yes. So the power draw, 96 watts. So it consumes a bit more than the, the 3600 XT because it is heavily overclocked, as you see. But in normal usage, or if you reduce, reduce the voltage a lot, a lot, I mean a bit, uh, it actually consumes less than the Ryzen 5 3600 XT. So that's quite a thing in my opinion. But yeah, as you see, 97 watts full load, which isn't that bad. The, so around 10 watts more, 10 to 8 watts more than my 3600 XT with the same voltage. With the same voltage, 1.25, of course, with the same voltage um, and uh, with less frequency and less performance. So, guys, as you've seen, this processor is amazing. So the power draw is roughly the the same, or in some cases, if we if we actually use PBO, it is even less than the Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Um, with a static overclock, it performs a bit better, in fact, in most cases, at least in multi-threading cases. 
uh, but it consumes a bit more on, on full load, so that's quite normal. But it is way faster, it has less latency, but well, uh, the only turn off is that the FCLK, so the Infinity Fabric Frequency, won't really go much over uh, 1900, which is a bummer, since the 4000 series, the 4000 APUs, can run 2000 or even in some cases 2200 megahertz on the FCLK, um, making it able to run 4400 megahertz at 1 1 ratio and actually improving a lot the results. So it's a bummer that these can't do it. And well, in terms of gaming, I can give you an advance that the CPU can actually push around 10 to 15 average, not static FPS, not uh, in that moment, but. 10 to 15 average FPS on Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1080p on the benchmark. So 10 to 15 FPS average just with 200 megahertz more on the frequency is a lot because that game is hard as shit, hard as shit to run and it is really, really CPU dependent. So that's a lot. And it may be even more in some other games, but well. I will test it, uh, my, the, the next video will be Ryzen 5 2600X versus 3600XT, thanks AMD for sending the CPU, versus this 5600X. Hope you enjoy. And well guys, that's all for today's video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, see you in the next one, which will be great.